As the new iPads came out this month, a lot of people said that they want to see Mac OS on iPad. I also thought about that and while that may solve some problems, I actually love using both Mac and iPad together because they both bring something special to the table. Hey Tsuka! Today we are diving into how you can get the most out of the Apple ecosystem by leveraging both the iPad and the Mac. We'll explore the unique strength of each device, how they can work together seamlessly and enhance your workflow. First, let's talk about what makes each of these devices unique. The iPad is all about portability, the touch interface, and the incredible Apple Pencil. With the new Apple Pencil Pro, it has even more capabilities than ever before. iPads also has the option to get a cellular model, which no Mac model has at the moment. It's great for when you're on the go and you can use it without trying to find Wi-Fi connection or tethering from your phone. It's perfect for note-taking, drawing, watching videos, etc. On the other hand, the Mac is amazing for multitasking with multiple windows and spaces. It also has so much more flexibility to customize your workflow with apps and plugins. Together, they form a perfect dynamic duo that can handle anything you throw at them. Next, let's jump into creating and annotating documents. All iPad models have a back camera that makes it easy to scan documents. The new M4 iPad Pro has a new adaptive True Tone flash that makes document scanning even better. If there are shadows in your shot, it instantly takes multiple photos with the new adaptive flash and stitches them together so the results look like it was perfectly scanned in a scanner. Another really cool thing is that it uses AI to automatically detect documents like forms and receipts and shows where the form should be filled out. If you already have a PDF, apps like Notability and GoodNotes or even the Apple default notes app makes it super easy to take handwritten notes and annotate PDFs. I've been a long time user of GoodNotes and use it to take notes and study. You can also use the scribble feature to convert handwriting to text. If you are working without a keyboard and just the Apple Pencil, it's super handy for quick notes or searches. This works in multiple languages too, so it's really handy for me to use when I'm studying. It's actually faster for me to handwrite in Korean because I don't have the keyboard memorized yet. Once you're back at your desk with your Mac, the document is super easy to hand over to the Mac. If you use iCloud to sync to your files, it should already be there. If not, you can of course use AirDrop or even copy from iPad and paste on back. Anything creativity is where this combo really shines iPad has great apps like Procreate for drawing or Lightroom for photo editing. Those are probably some of the most prominent use cases for the iPad to use it like that. Of course, you can also draw on your iPad, bring it to your Mac and animate it on your videos like this. Some other really cool use cases are if you have an iPad Pro, use the LiDAR scanner to 3D scan physical objects using apps like Scaniverse and then bring the 3D file over to the Mac for more complicated editing and animating with softwares like Blender or Spline. I have to cover video editing as a separate category because I spend a lot of time and energy doing this every single week. My video editing software of choice right now is DaVinci Resolve and I've used Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro in the past but ended up with DaVinci Resolve for a couple of reasons. One of the most important reasons was the ease of collaboration with my editor through Blackmagic Cloud. I could talk about the cloud collaboration in another video if anyone's interested, but for the sake of this video, I want to point out that DaVinci Resolve has a pretty good iPad app and it can sync with other computers through the cloud. This workflow really exemplifies that it's not really about iPad versus Mac, but they both work in similar ways and the user can choose which device to use depending on what is needed at the moment. I've talked a lot about cloud and syncing in this video already, but having good file management and cloud sync systems are crucial for setting up the basics of a smooth workflow between your iPad and Mac. The easiest solution is probably iCloud. Your files are always up to date across all devices from the moment you set it up. We have a iCloud Plus subscription with a two terabyte storage shared between my husband and I. 
If you're more of a Google Drive or Dropbox user, you can actually sync that on your iPad too and use it very similar to iCloud. Once you have the iPad app installed, you can go to the Files app to enable the app and select the folders you want to sync. You can also connect to an external SSD to access files that way on iPad and then just plug that into the Mac to use the same files across devices. I honestly was not a huge fan of the Files app compared to the Finder on the Mac because it lacks in flexibility with window management. Here are some tips to make the Files app a little bit easier to use. First is changing the view options to columns instead of icons. This helps me look at my files within layers. Second is changing the display zoom to more space. This gives you a lot more screen space to work with and you can see more files at the same time. Number three is changing the text size to a smaller size. Similar to number two, it also gives you more screen real estate. One of my favorite features is using the iPad as your second monitor of your Mac with Sidecar. This extends your Mac screen, giving you more space to work. This is perfect for multitasking, video editing, or even just keeping your email or chat open on the side. There is another feature that is kind of similar called universal control, where you can control your iPad with the same keyboard and mouse on the Mac. It's seriously magical because you don't even need any setup on either side. You just need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi and Apple ID. And when you take your pointer from the Mac and you keep going in the direction of where the iPad is, the cursor just pops out from the other side. The iPad and Mac has shortcuts that are exactly the same when you're using the keyboard. These are some of the shortcuts that I use every single day, if not every single hour that I'm using these devices. Command N to open new window. Command W to close a window. Command spacebar for spotlight. Command tab for cycling through open apps. Command shift tab to cycle through open apps going the other direction. On the iPad, on any given app, you can long press on the command button to show the keyboard shortcuts available on that app. This is really useful when you're just getting started using keyboard shortcuts on the iPad. So those were my tips on using the iPad and Mac together and forming a more productive workflow. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos about tech and creativity. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.